What would make this an especially meaningful conversation for you today? I just like, you know, basic questions sort of answered about like how I can better approach um, certain question types and um, how I can like better drill certain question types um, because I've been going at this thing pretty, pretty long, I guess. Um, I've, I've been studying since the summer, but the thing about that is when I was studying during the summer and when I was with uh, another tutor, um, admittedly, I wasn't taking, uh, I wasn't taking my, stu my studies very seriously. And I was kind of relying on what, uh, what the uh, tutor was going to tell me or like, you know, I would, I would do the work that was assigned to me, but only enough to get it, you know, to, to get feedback from the tutor. Um, and that lasted for about two months. Then I found your blog and, uh, I just really appreciated how thorough you, uh, how, how thorough you are because, uh, I just kind of lack, like a, a lot of, a lot of the, the tutors that I've had in the past, uh, lack that crucial element. It just didn't seem like they were, truly invested in the student's uh, success and their progress. Um, but I, just, I guess my first question is, uh, how do I keep like momentum? Um, because, you know, I've been a little, I don't know, a, a little dispirited kind of, I don't want to say I've been on a decline, but <laughs> yeah, I'm taking the test in January. So yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad you've got some time and I'm glad that you found my resources helpful. I guess what you're really looking for is, is motivation and the spirit to keep going with this. And so I would ask you then two things. One is, what is your goal and what will happen if you don't make it? Those are two things to keep in mind. So let's talk about a little bit. Why do you want to go to law school and where do you want to go? I want to go to law school because... I don't know. I just, there's so much rampant like inequity that um, I've always had a heart for, you know, helping improve. And um, I don't know. I just, just my daily, my daily conversations with people tend to, uh, tend to, you know, lend, lend themselves to like, issues of law and, you know, policy and things like that. So, I mean, it's just, it's really just kind of in my blood. Um, I will admit that, you know, law is somewhat of a family profession. My, both my father and uncle are uh, attorneys. Uh, my uncle graduated from Georgetown. Um, and I think he got his LLM from uh, Notre Dame. And, um, I like Georgetown. I'd love to go to Georgetown. It's a rich school, but I'd love, I'd love to go to Georgetown, uh, Penn. Like I'd love to go there. Like I said, those are rich schools, uh, Vandy, Texas, though, like just like really kind of strong programs. Um, Emory would be good. I'm sorry. Yeah. Emory would be good. Just those are kind of like my higher end choices. And then I have a few safeties that I'll uh, still apply to, but th that's, I mean, that's why I've been trying to get my, you know, scores and things up. And that's why, uh, you know, I've been watching a few of your videos and you said uh, that, you know, in lieu of like rolling admissions, like, um, you know, the later you take your test, it's like, <laughs> uh, the less sort of room there is to kind of squeeze through the door. And um, that's, I'm, admittedly, that's, that's been a concern of mine, but um, I'm hopeful, <laughs> I'm praying, <laughs> but yeah. Well, January isn't too late, first off, and you've got about three months until then, so that's plenty of time to make anything happen, especially since you're not starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a couple of things you can think about with regard to motivation. One is, you said your inequities in the world, inequities in society. And so you can think about and keep at top of yeah. your mind, what are some of the worst inequities or worst situations you see out there in the world, in policy, in society, in politics, that you think you could help to fix with the law? So you could keep some of those, some atrocities in mind as, 
as depressing as that could be, that could also serve as motivation because there's bad stuff happening out there that you could help to fix. You could also keep in mind, what would you like to fix? What, what would be the end result you would like to see? So if there's some bad law you want off the books or some new law you'd like to help enact, or there's some population you think you could help, those are all things you can use as fuel and as motivation. And then some of the law schools specifically that you would consider reaches, like Georgetown, for example. If you visit campus or you talk with current students or alums and you can imagine yourself at that school and you could even have the school's picture of the, of the main campus or the logo of the school on your desktop or on your home screen on your phone, just as a reminder of where you want to end up, that, those are some reasons for you to keep hitting the books day after day or night after night as motivation to, make, to help yourself get the best score possible. And I guess that's, that's kind of why, like, I'm, I'm sort of non-traditional, um, or maybe not, maybe non-traditional is not exactly the word, but um, generally uh, after people graduate from undergrad, because I'm, I'm a graduate, uh, they, you know, they go off uh, into whatever field of work that, you know, that they have lined up while, uh, have, whilst having to uh, juggle LSAT prep. And um, luckily, you know, I, uh, I was, a, I, I'm able to take a gap year and uh, prepare. So every day for me, you know, my, my job is to study. And um, I try to dedicate like <laughs> six to eight hours. It, it, it definitely does not always happen. But, you know, I guess my thing is like, when you feel you have one job, and it's like, but I'm not, <laughs> it's almost like I'm not making the, the progress in that job that I'd like to make. It's like, you know, what? I don't know. Well, 68 hours a day is a lot. And so if you do that every single day and you're studying yeah. full time, that could very easily lead to burnout because the LSAT is taxing and 68, 68 hours is a long time. I might recommend reducing that a bit closer to five to six hours with frequent breaks scattered throughout just so you don't run that risk of burnout. And then it could also be helpful to actually somewhat counterintuitively take on some other responsibility simultaneously to force yourself to get a bit more organized and keep moving ahead with everything you do. Like if, if the alternative to studying is like watching Netflix or going on your email or social media or whatever, that could be a distraction. But if you were also simultaneously like working out a lot or you had a volunteer work or a part-time job or something, that could force you to make the most of every single minute that you have. When you study for six to eight hours a day, what does your day typically look like? What's the schedule breakdown each yeah. day? Oh, wow. You should see my desk. Um, I've got like four uh, next 10 books. Um, some of which I, I work my three, three month plan out of, of course. Uh, then I have a, a, what is it? A Kaplan book that I, I mean, I don't open it really. I mean, I look at it sometimes, but I haven't really opened it in the past few weeks. And then I do Khan Academy. Nice. Fantastic. So, yeah. And do you feel like you have a, a detailed plan of attack? Because I think I sent you one to use along with the course. Yeah, you did. And, I'm, and I've been looking at it and I've been working at it. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Some days I kind of fall behind, but yeah, I've been working the problems and, you know, I mean, some of them I miss more than I'd like to, but I try to go back and, you know, do the, uh, or explain it to myself in my head because, um, you know, there, there, there aren't any uh, answer explanations in the next 10 books, in the next 10 series. So, right, um, correct. so that's what I try to do. But um, I guess to kind of get into the meat and potatoes for the, you know, the last few minutes that we have, uh, the question types that I tend to struggle with in uh, analytical reasoning or uh, logic games are, you know, for how many of these are completely determined if da 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 and then like the substitution questions, of course, uh, and 
And then, you know, more sort of general approaches that I kind of uh, struggle with, like making all the necessary uh, inferences and correctly notating terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with logic, I'll speak to the, the latter couple of questions you had first. So making all the necessary inferences, you may not make all the inferences all the time. When you look at explanations and you see someone else's perfect way of doing the game, that's someone who's expert in this exam, who's been doing it for years and years and years, and they may not have seen that way of doing it the first time around, the first time they attempted it. So keep in mind that ideally what happens most realistically on test day is that out of the four games, you might solve two of them super efficiently, but then you build up a time bank to solve the other two a little bit less efficiently. But over time, as you do more and more games, you will come to make more and more of those inferences up front when possible. And also note that some of the toughest curveball games actually don't have a lot that you can do in the way of upfront inferences. And rather, you're doing more work over the course of the game. And that's just the nature of the game. The short answer is simply practice and your sense of when to make inferences up front will improve with time. And you have enough time to do a lot of games. You said you have four books of next 10 exams. That's 40 exams. That's uh, 160 games. Mm -hmm. And so you work through all of those. And you also work through my list of curveball games that I'll send you. And you'll be setting yourself up for success on those. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I just want to say, like, I look at some of your games that you post on your website, and it's, they are particularly um, <laughs> rigorous, like, I, I look at them, I'm like, oh my God, this is like <laughs> watching games on on steroids. Like just as, just when you thought it couldn't get any more difficult. <laughs> but I think I think it's that's why that's why I really like your program because um you're thorough and you 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 seek to make it or you want you want um your students to um be prepared for any curveball that they might throw it's always you know it's safer it, it's better to be safe than sorry so I always uh, appreciate that but I will uh, say that I've improved um, my, my, my legs out levels on Khan Academy uh, with my reading comprehension um, and I'm, I was in, I'm, in, I'm an English student or I'm an, uh, I graduated with my BA in English so I was always kind of baffled by that like why am I having trouble with this but uh, Oddly enough, when I slow when I started slowing down, that's when I started doing better. S stopped caring less about the clock. I, I still check the clock after I finish. Like, did I make it under three minutes? Preferably under two minutes and thirty seconds. And a lot of times I do. But um, uh, when I started slowing down, the better I, I noticed that was the better I started doing because I was absorbing the uh, the necessary material for the questions. And you know, in terms of um, logical reasoning. Uh, my reasoning has uh, has improved too because I I look for the logical gap. Like when I'm reading it, you know, I kind of I almost kind of diagram in my head because you know you don't always have the time to diagram on paper. So I kind of you know do that in my head, and and uh, I think it's obviously necessary to know the basic rules of formal logic to to you know attack those questions no matter how um, taxing they get. And I'm also employing your, uh, your, your approaches of, you know, if it's, if it's too draining, try to come back to it. So, I mean, I'm working. I'm, I'm definitely working, but yeah, I, I'd, like, I'd, like to, I'd like to be in the 170s, but I mean, we'll see. <laughs> But it sounds like you're doing all the right things, especially what you said about slowing down, taking the time to thoroughly understand things, whether it's making inferences up front for a logic game or taking the time to thoroughly understand the stimulus. Timing is important, but you have enough time until January that you can focus on accuracy for now, then introduce the timing and the pacing a little bit later. But give yourself a chance to learn the material first and start to interpret and analyze all the patterns within these questions. Because that way, when you see a new question, you'll be able to automatically relate it back to something you've done previously. Okay, so what's the, my last question? What's the best tactic for drilling? 
like just I mean because you have I mean you have on your day by day study plan you know you you drill certain certain types but aside from that what what's what can I what can I do on my own to just keep at it like keep drilling certain types of questions and games and stuff well if there's a certain game type or question type that you have a special difficulty with then focus on that doing several of those in a row so if you have trouble with grouping in out games or trouble with flaw questions you just do several of those in a row maybe a couple dozen in a row to start to better see the patterns and what they're asking you to do in that particular question type yes now if you were looking for other types of drills to do one thing i love to have students do for logical reasoning is to drill questions involving abstract language not related to the question type in the question stem but rather questions that involve complex abstract formal language with tough vocabulary words you just do a bunch of those questions in a row look up all the words and phrases that you're not familiar with so that next time they come around you'll be able to interpret them more quickly and not waste time getting stuck on those yes yes um before you go to i also want to say that i uh i uh have a uh, online or not online but uh a word document a journal a mistake journal uh i've only done it for one of my tests because i had taken five tests about five tests prior to when i started with my three month day by day plan but um just sitting there forcing myself to go through my thought processes uh was very helpful um i felt a lot more confident about my understanding my comprehension of you know the necessary approach to certain question types so that's great yeah. i'm really happy to hear it yes um i don't i don't believe i have any more questions for you um I really appreciate this uh, opportunity, <laughs> um, and I'll keep I'll keep trucking on, and um, we'll remain in contact. Fantastic, Barry! I'm really ha happy to hear it. What would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Ooh, <laughs> don't lose don't lose sight of uh, pacing. Um, it's more about, uh, your approach and how you go about it, uh, rather than how much you do or how much you run through. So if that makes sense, like if you, if you drill certain, if you drill a, a certain set of questions and, um, you start to pick up on them, it's better to do that than to like run through just a bunch of just different questions and get them all wrong to just say that you're doing, you know, haphazardly, so. That's exactly right. So it sounds like you know exactly what to be doing over the next couple months, so just keep at it. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.